Next on Hooton's Arkansas Football, high school highlights. Video from more than 20 games is straight ahead. The strength of the Southeastern Cup. Come grow with us. I'm Brandy Busby. And I'm Heather Fortenberry. And, and everybody, everybody at Jonesboro West is watching Hooton's Arkansas Football. Woo! Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas Football with high school highlights brought to you by Arkansas Farm Bureau. The Bauxite Miners have had a tough time with their schedule this year, just like every team in the 5AA South. Two teams on Bauxite's schedule have dropped football during the season. So on Thursday night, Bauxite played Little Rock McClellan just to get in the game. And here's some Thursday night heroes, Daniel Phillips, Craig Dick, and Justin Nichols. Good pursuit on McClellan's quarterback right here. They take him down. Then it's Charlie Lawrence handing off to Damian Sal for the big gain. Damian had a huge night, and Coach John Watson and Boxite fed Little Rock McClellan's JV a steady diet of Sal, and Boxite's defense was tough too. Hey, it doesn't matter if it's Thursday or Friday night. They're always ready for some football at the pit. Boxite wins big over McClellan's JV. This Friday night, the Miners play Magnet Cove in a huge 5AA South showdown. We asked the uh, McClellan coaches to uh, analyze us and compare us to Magnet Cove, who they played last Thursday night. They told us that Magnet Cove is more physical than we are. We've worked on that this week. We knew that. We hadn't played physical football all year. Our kids have not really. We've, we've gotten by, but we hadn't played box site football all year long. The two weeks off, we've had some tremendous practices. I think it's going to be a good ball game. Both teams, I think, are, have good, strong, rich programs and rich traditions. And it's basically going to come down to us and Magnet Cove several years from now, too, I think. Coach Shane Story and number five Charleston made the trip over the mountain for a non-conference matchup at Elkins Friday night. First quarter action. This is Tiger Jr. running back Jeff Long finding his way down the far sideline for a six to nothing lead for Charleston early. This was a sloppy game early on. Lots of turnovers by both teams. Elkins fullback Steve Haney, he had a huge week last Friday. 126 yards, four touchdowns against Greenland. He found it a little tougher going against the Tigers on Friday night, but Elkins rarely stopped Charleston. The Tigers lost standout running back V.J. Akers the second week of the season, but they managed just fine without him Friday. Curtis Sims gets loose here for another Tiger TD going away from you, and Charleston goes on to win in Washington County. Final score, Charleston 45, Elkins 30. Carlisle got a scare at Marshall two years ago. That wasn't the case Friday night. The Bison set the tone early when senior Randy Vest returns the opening kickoff all the way back up to midfield. Then the reverse works for numero uno. That's Blade Ebbs. He's smooth all the way down to the 20. And you can't show Carlisle highlights without Sonic super teamer Griffin Gallagher. He takes it in from 10 yards out and would romp and stomp for 226 yards on the night. Carlisle plays host to Harding next week. No love lost there, baby. Final score, Carlisle 33, Marshall Nada. And Carlisle is 8-0 on the year, ranked number four this week by Hooton's Arkansas Football, just ahead of Charleston and just behind Boxsite. The top 15 stays the same this week in Hooton's Arkansas Football. Junction City and Barton are also undefeated. There's Harding with a 7-1 record at number 10. The only other unbeaten team in AA is Desark. They're ranked number 12 this week. Gurdon is at number 15 with a 5-3 record. The Smackover Buckaroos are number 16. Then it's Ryzen, Murfreesboro, and Magnet Cove. Bigelow drops out of the top 20 after a 22-point loss to McCrory. That makes way for Magnet Cove to move into the top 20. The Panthers' only loss this year was to Class 4A Hot Springs Lakeside in the season opener. Coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football, we'll take a look at some of the bigger games from AAA on Friday night, including Atkins Pulaski Academy. We've got Robinson against Beebe, Waldron, Ozark, Pocahontas, and Clinton, and the big one, Boonville against Clarksville, the big showdown in Johnson County from Friday night. Highlights of all those games coming up next when we look at the AAA on Hooton's Arkansas Football. For over 60 years, Farm Bureau has helped Arkansans in Platt for only 99 cents. Kristen Campbell. Everybody from Benton loves Hooton's Arkansas football. Yeah, 
It was senior night at BB Friday, and the Badgers saved their best effort of the year for their final home game against the Pulaski Robinson Senators. Early on, quarterback Tommy Edwards hands off to senior star Nick Bradley, and Nick would go the distance. For the BB touchdown, he finished with 244 yards and three touchdowns. Robinson entered the game with a share of the conference lead. This was a tough loss. BB was ready for the Senators. Robinson quarterback Michael Yielding's pass is broken up right here by Badger Wes Evans, then the play of the night. From the two-yard line, it's Nicholas Bradley again. This time, he goes 98 yards for the touchdown and runs BB right back into playoff contention. In an upset, final score, Badgers 28, Robinson 20. Robinson's loss puts Pulaski Academy in a sweet spot. The Bruins took care of Atkins Friday night and now sit alone atop the five AAA conference. Against Atkins, PA quarterback Isaac Smith was on fire. Isaac completed 17 of 22 passes for 232 yards and three touchdowns. This toss to Bryce Morgan sets up Blake Pison for the touchdown. P.J. Hickey caught six passes and kicked five extra points on the night. A little later, it's Madman Matt Gilkin making the monster hit on Atkins Littlefeller. That's Robin St. Clair. P.A. led 38 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Next week, the Bruins can clinch a number one seed in the playoffs with a win at Robinson. Final score from Friday, Pulaski Academy 38, Atkins 16. Hootons Arkansas football made its second appearance of the season at Ozark Friday night for the Hillbillies against Waldron. Ozark! And Ozark is likely headed back to the playoffs. The Hillbillies built a 26-7 lead but got a scare in the fourth quarter when Waldron's junior fullback, Dusty Lovett, scores from five yards out on the sweep. Eddie Spence's extra point cuts the lead to 26. 614. Waldron would then stop Ozark and get the ball back. With 421 left, it's fourth and two at the 35. That's when Casey Lunsford keeps for the first down. Big play for Waldron. Then the screen pass to number 42. That's junior receiver Toby Graves. Another short pass to senior Josh Mortney on fourth and five with just over three minutes to go. Gets Waldron all the way down to the Hillbilly 15-yard line. But Lunsford's pass is just out of reach for Graves. That could have cut the lead to six with three minutes left and Ozark holds on to win 26 to 14. Boonville and Clarksville is one of the state's best rivalries even though Boonville has dominated the series for much of the past two decades. Razorback quarterback Gary Brashears couldn't even help Clarksville beat Boonville last year and without star running back Caleb Hilton on Friday night the Panthers had a little chance again. This was all Boonville. Clarksville quarterback Justin Pittman is popped from behind. That's Boonville's big man Jeremiah DePriest with the hit. Then the Bearcats ground game gets going. With Zach Adair keeping down to the four-yard line where Nick Paisley finally catches him from behind. Then it's Alan Gator Ray for the touchdown and Boonville's up early. A little later, a Clarksville miscue. When the pitch gets away from Paisley, Boonville's Brandon Rowland picks it up and heads toward the end zone. Boonville owns Clarksville. And the Bearcats are unbeaten and ready for a showdown with Ozark in two weeks. Final score, Boonville 49, Clarksville 0. <laughs> The Redskins had seven possessions in that first half and scored on five of them. That's Tim Scott. He first started covering Pocahontas Redskin football back in 1969 when KPOC-FM first went on the air. For the Redskins here in... His son, Ryan Scott, is Pocahontas' quarterback. He will likely surpass Brian Baltz's all-time passing record at Pocahontas. Ryan helped the Redskins build a 29-0 halftime lead at Clinton on Friday night. Early in the third quarter, this is Clinton's sophomore quarterback, Garrett Bonds, intercepted by Pokey's Andrew Baltz, and then Baltz gets smacked by Clinton's Justin Smith. Then it's Pocahontas' backup quarterback. Sophomore David Huffman passes short to junior Justin Dorman before Cody Lassiter and Lance Campbell make the tackle for Clinton. But Pocahontas would keep Clinton winless. Final score, Pocahontas 29, Clinton 7. And here is Hootons Arkansas football class 3A poll after eight weeks of the season. Those top four teams are still unbeaten. Nashville is 6-2. Lone Oak comes in at number six, followed by Star City, Ozark, Green Forest, and Gosnell. Then the second 10 begins with Rivercrest, the Queen, Dardanelle, Prairie Grove, and the Fordyce Red Bugs. Dollar Way is number 16. Then it's Mariana, Pulaski Academy up to number 18. Clarksville drops to number 19. And Truman is 20. 
Coming up next on Hooten's Arkansas Football, I'll look at some of the better teams in Class 4A. A couple of big games in the West, a couple of big games in the East. We've got Harrison and Alma, Searcy and Greenbrier, plus Paragould against Newport, and Green County Tech against Batesville. All of those games coming up, plus the new Class 4A poll for Hooten's Arkansas Football. That's straight ahead. And we begin our Class 4A coverage with the Greenbrier Panthers playing host to the Searcy Lions in a wild 4A West matchup. This one had playoff implications, and early on, it's Searcy quarterback Freddie Langston pitching to Adam Rutledge. Those two are having huge senior season. After the nifty cutback, Rutledge goes in for an early Searcy lead, but Greenbrier comes right back. That's Chad Pitts up the middle all the way for a Greenbrier touchdown to make it 7-7 in the first quarter. This game was a dandy early on. Watch this play now by Searcy's Steady Freddy. Throw into Blaine Mallett for the touchdown, or was it? Officials said yes. Put the points on the board for Searcy, then the Lions are back on top 14 to 7. Greenbrier answers when senior quarterback Ricky Shannon keeps around the end. Then Ricky pitches to senior running back Justin Aiken for a quick touchdown as Justin stretches for the score. Searcy led 14 to 12 at halftime, but would pull away down the stretch. Searcy's headed to the playoffs. Final score, Lions 47, Greenbrier 32. Well, I think it was a really good win for us coming off a uh, big loss to Harrison last week. Uh, we really needed it. And, uh, Hope we can take this and build on it from uh, for next week and roll into the playoffs. Number two, Harrison was at number five, Alma, for a classic 4A West matchup Friday night. This was Hooton's Arkansas football class 4A game of the week. Late in the second quarter, Harrison was up nine to nothing when two incredible plays happened. First of all, Harrison tries the forward pass. You won't see that much. Then on the punt, Alma calls for a fair catch on the two yard line. Alma coach Frank Vines, what's his reaction? He can't can't believe it. The Aradells call for the fair catch on the two. They get out of the end zone when number 13, junior Russell Scroggins, runs the sneak. Then number 27, junior Jonathan Kimes, breaks out for the first down. Alma put together a little drive to get to midfield. But Harrison's number 50, senior Stephen Gwynn, and number 26, that fellow senior Seth Edwards, combined to sack Scroggins at the end of the half, and Harrison is still up 9 to nothing. They go on to win this in a classic. Harrison 9, Alma 7. Go out with the same style that you showed all year. When things were down, you guys, you held your class. You held your poise. You showed what you were made of. People doubted you, even in this town. People doubted. 0-4, guys. We're now 3-1. We went tonight against Green County. We're in the playoffs. Batesville coach Dave King and the Pioneers have turned around their season after losing their first four. Batesville's back in the playoff hunt. And Friday night, the Pioneers played host to Green County Tech. On Batesville's second play from scrimmage, junior quarterback Logan Treadway hands off to sophomore Sam Cook. Sam is Batesville's backup quarterback. He throws it 54 yards to Gordon Buchanan for the Pioneer touchdown. And Jeremy Bowers' extra point made it 7 to nothing. Then on Batesville, second possession. First play. It's senior running back John Wackerly. Hey, Gulf South coaches, you better get over to John's house. This guy is for real. He goes 68 yards. That made it 14 to nothing with seven minutes left in the first quarter. Green County would come back to score, though. After a pioneer turnover near midfield, sophomore running back Casey Stokes has a couple of nice runs. Then it's quarterback Darren Rogers keeping from one yard out. Aaron Drake's extra point made it 14 to seven. But Batesville goes on to beat Green County 49 to 27. The Pioneers play at Osceola next week and at rival Newport in two weeks. And Newport played host to the other team from Paragould. Paragould High, the Rams were in town to take on the Greyhounds. Newport led 20 to 10 midway through the third quarter when sophomore Linnell Ellis gets loose for a couple of nice runs. Then junior Jeffrey Valentine, he had 108 yards on the night. Ellis scores from eight yards out, and junior Simon Alborn kicks the extra point. That put Newport up by 17. And Newport's defense kept pressure on Paragould quarterback Brad Masser most of the night. He finds Caleb Williams for a short gain here, but with just over five minutes left in the game, Newport's Jerry Brown breaks a 25-yard run on the option pitch from Jordan Walker. That set up Lois Warhorton's two-yard run, and Newport goes on to win. Final score, Greyhounds 34, Paragould 10. 
And here is Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 4A poll. The top three teams are unbeaten. Lake Hamilton 7-1. And, and Alma stays number five this week despite the two-point loss to Harrison. Then it's Searcy, Newport, Chapel, Whitehall, and West Helena. The second 10 starts with Stuttgart, followed by Moralton, Batesville. Hope is up four spots after a win over Ashdown. Monticello's number 16. Magnolia's 18. Hot Springs Lakeside is back in the top 20 after beating Hot Springs for a mythical city championship. Celebrate all. Now more high school highlights brought to you by First Security Bank Corps on Newton's Arkansas football. Number two, Little Rock Central built a 27 to nothing halftime lead on Little Rock Parkview Friday night thanks to some early Parkview miscues. The Patriots' Rodney Evans fumbles this pitch on the first play for Parkview and the Patriots would turn it over on three of their first four possessions. Central's sophomore stud, Dedrick Poole, had another huge night, rushing for 219 yards and three touchdowns. And Central's quarterback, Derek Mason, passes to Lawrence Day for the second touchdown of the night for Central. The Tigers go on, pounding Parkview. Final score, Central 61, Patriots 16. Number one, Bryant secured its second playoff appearance in school history with an easy win over Little Rock McClellan Friday night. Bryant senior quarterback Derek McCoy completed 16 of 26 passes for 214 yards and a couple of touchdown passes, including this 15-yard toss to Matt White for a 7-0 lead early. Then it's the deceitful Derek McCoy. Acting as if he's looking for a play, runs to the sideline, but he's not looking for a play. He's looking for the pass. Then Bryant's Luke Brown would score on this three-yard run to make it 14 to nothing. The lead was 28 to zero midway through the second quarter, and Bryant stays unbeaten. Final score: Hornets 35, outmanned McClellan 12. Tradition Ridge Springdale secured its 20th playoff appearance in school history with a win over Barry Lunny and the Southside Rebels at Bulldog Stadium Friday night. Springdale led 12 to nothing in halftime when standout senior quarterback Will Hunt threw this pretty pass to Adam Allen on the Springdale sidelines. It was a 76-yard touchdown, but Springdale's offense struggled most of the night, losing four of six fumbles plus one interception to the Rebels. The Bulldogs' defense did dominate again. Springdale has the state's top scoring defense in their seven wins this year. Springdale has allowed just 25 points. Final score, Springdale 18, Southside 7. For the past five or six years, our offense has been able to just move up and down the field in practice. And against this defense, uh, you know, they made one big play right after another. Of the people we got over there, most of them are real natural athletes and got some quickness and uh, got some strength. Those defensive guys, they'll get after you, then they'll just keep shooting at you, and pretty soon you're going to make a mistake and, and uh, give us good field position, and uh, sometimes our offense is going to score. <laughs> Big game in Benton County between Rogers and Fayetteville Friday night. The winner of this one would stay in the playoff hunt, while the loser would really be a long shot to make postseason play. And Rogers led 10-6 in the fourth quarter when Fayetteville got its chance. After a Rogers fumble in midfield with just under four minutes to play, the Purple Dogs drove to the 23-yard line. But that's when Rogers' is Skyler Mills intercepts Cody Clark. Now remember, Rogers made it to the playoff semifinals two years ago, and they're still in the hunt for postseason play this year. Final score, Rogers 10, Fayetteville 6. That team two years ago wasn't as good as this team defensively. But offensively, they were better. They were, you know, we had we had the big home run guy that made a lot of plays. This year we can throw a little, but obviously we don't very much. But uh, we're real young in the offensive line. Our offensive line just hooked together for finally. We've actually, we actually hooked up for once. You know, I mean, usually it's been individual. Everybody's been screwing up here and there, and now it's we're all together. Are you ready to play? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you excited about it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I feel it right here. It's not false. It's nothing I'm making up. But I feel it really good tonight. And I want y'all to feel it with me. And I want to have a good time tonight. And I want you to enjoy the night. I want you to remember that you never can play this game again. You never can play it. You can't replay it tomorrow and wish you'd done better. You understand that? It's because tonight is the only time, the only opportunity you're going to have the Bentonville Tigers at home. 
Yeah. So take care of business. Northside's first year coach, Derry Marshall, getting his Grizzlies ready for Bentonville in Fort Smith on Friday night. Northside dominated from start to finish in this one. The Grizzlies throw 65 yards for their first score. Quasim Abdul Kalik scored his first of two touchdowns on the night with this 10 yard run. Northside's defense limited Bentonville to 158 yards on the night, too. And this big hit by Toby Johnson on Bentonville's Derek Hartman causes the fumble. Deion Owens recovers at the Bentonville 14. From there, Northside's wing T offense would turn the turnover into points. On its next play, Jawan Parker goes in for the score, and Northside led 14 to nothing just five minutes into the game. And the Grizzlies are alone in second place of the West after blistering Bentonville 38 to nothing. High-scoring Sylvan Hills met explosive West Memphis in a wild one Friday night. The Bears' familiar pair of quarterback Josh Hum to receiver Levi Roy was working hard again, and Cedric Shaw shows his speed on this long run for Sylvan Hills all the way down to the four-yard line. This game was tied at 21 at halftime. Sylvan Hills kicked a field goal with five seconds left to send it into overtime and then stopped West Memphis on a two-point conversion in overtime. Final score in OT, Sylvan Hills 41, West Memphis 40. <laughs> Friday night at Conway, Fair beat the Wampus Cats. It was 14-7 with Fair up at halftime. The War Eagles kick off to Nathan Reagan to start the second half. It's a good return by Nathan up past midfield, but Fair's defense would step up. Big number five, it's Jason Johnson. He is tough, and he stuffs Brian Jones right here. Conway tries to go the air. It's Rusty Ramsey back to pass, but he's intercepted by Chris Harris for the War Eagles, and Fair's defense would win this game with a goal line stand late in the fourth quarter. Final score, Fair 14, Conway 7. And welcome back to Hooton's Arkansas Football. Coming up next Sunday at 1 o'clock right here on our show, we will have highlights from the Arkansas-Auburn game, plus what Houston Nutt had to say after the game between the Razorbacks and the Tigers. You will want to tune in at 1 o'clock for that, and then we will have high school video. And here are some of the games that uh, we will be covering next Friday night. We will be in Jefferson County front night for Pine Bluff and El Dorado. That game could decide the 5A South's number two seed. Also, Hooton's Arkansas Football cameras will be at Box Site, Carlisle and Lone Oak, as well as North Little Rock, Hope, Gurdon, and Nashville. Thanks again for watching Hooton's Arkansas Football today. We will see you back here next Sunday at 1 o'clock. Hopefully we'll be talking about a Razorback win over the Auburn Tigers and a whole lot of good high school football games as well. It's next Sunday at 1 o'clock here on Channel 4. It's Hooton's Arkansas Football, and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday.